Unlike some YouTubers, and totally not tooting my own horn, I do take comments into consideration when deciding on a video topic. I've received requests to do guides on specific transformations. Don't worry, dude, I'll get around to the three Super Saiyan transformation eventually. I've been told to get good. Oh, wait a minute. And most recently, I've been told that I need to better explain myself on my opinions on the triggering the Dragon Ball community video and elaborate on certain subjects. And that's precisely what I'm gonna do. Welcome to how to trigger the entire Dragon Ball community, remastered. Now with Supply Dragon. Dragon Ball Kai is better than Dragon Ball Z. We'll get to Colin Clickenbeard, Christopher Irie is in the music later. But in terms of overall quality, pacing, and faithfulness to the manga, Dragon Ball Kai has Z objectively beaten on every level. The original Z airing had a strange darkness to the quality, meanwhile Kai is not only brighter and more natural with its colors, but the outlines and detail marks were sharpened and made a lot cleaner. Kai also did the service of cutting all the needless filler, making combat sequences flow a lot better. The dubbing not only is objectively better, but is also more faithful to what the Japanese dubbing in the manga has. Now, it may not exactly be fair to compare their quality considering the difference in air dates, but if the rest of the fanbase can be overzealous about their preference, so can I, goddammit. Dragon Ball GT was good. Look, even I'm not stupid enough to ignore GT's problems. The entire first arc essentially playing a mediocre homage to Dragon Ball's adventure style, the general shafting of the lore of the entire franchise, motherfucking Super 17, but the same people who consider GT the worst thing conceived by man are also the same people who give Super a pass just for the sole reason that Toriyama wrote those stories. Despite GT's faults, it's still a fun watch, keeping the classic Dragon Ball Z animation style in combat, fantastic villain designs, everything about Super Saiyan 4 and its introduction. It may not be 100% Toriyama's work, but it's still fun to watch. Speaking of Toriyama's work, Dragon Ball Super sucks. Before you whip out your pitchforks, let me share with you some facts. Dragon Ball Super hit many of the same notes that GT did. One boring filler arc that's about as memorable as Dinosaur by Disney, the first real villain arc with a great villain, a shit second arc with a recycled villain, a third, fourth in Super's case, cool arc with another okay villain, that same arc involving the villain fusing with one or more of the other villains, which forces Goku and Vegeta to fuse and inevitably split apart due to a large expenditure of energy, one new but quickly forgotten transformation that serves as a vessel for a new one to be used as the main transformation, but only Goku and Vegeta can do it, a new set of Dragon Balls never mentioned in Dragon Ball Z, and a throwaway cast of an annoying trio of characters. The only difference is Super has an arc with a couple of interesting characters, and GT is visually impressive to watch. And if you still think Super is still superior with its storytelling, a marathon through the entire Black Goku arc will say otherwise. And don't you fucking dare accuse me of being salty that Trunks stole the win. I was never really impressed with Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi 3. I've played it a few times before, and I was never really wowed by its gameplay. If there was one thing I could give it though, is that it is essentially the Skyrim of DBZ game mods. If I were to type DBZ mods in Google, more than 90% of those results are bound to be in relation to Tenkaichi 3. Colleen Clinkenbeard is the superior Gohan voice actor. While I do understand why people don't like this interpretation, especially when you get to the cell fight, the raw talent behind Colleen compared to Stephanie Nadalny is unquestionable. While Stephanie's voice is truly iconic, her ability to apply the correct inflection and sound somewhat natural without making it blatantly obvious that she's reading from a script doesn't even hold a candle to the veteran work of Colleen. Although I do think Colleen's voice is better applied to characters who can be considered women of authority, people like Mocha Akashia from Rosario Vampire or Lilith from Borderlands, but she gives a truly talented interpretation of Gohan in my honest opinion. Christopher Irias is the superior Frieza voice actor. As I stated in my original video, I truly, wholeheartedly believe that the people who claim Linda Young as the better voice actor only say so because the nostalgia and or Kai hate bandwagon has taken over. In every way, Irius blows Young's performance completely out of the water, both in talent and character representation. Frieza's calm but condescending and sneering attitude lost to the desperation when one gets a leg up on him is fantastically displayed through Irius and his Japanese voice actor, Ryusei Nakao. Is that how you pronounce it? I don't know. Meanwhile, Young merely sounds like a 12-year-old trying to sound menacing or a 70-year-old smoker. Sorry, but there's just no talent to be found here. Broly is my favorite villain in all of Dragon Ball media. Yes, Frieza's foreboding sense of true terror throughout the Namek saga was great. Yes, 
Cell's horror-like movie introduction was terrifying. Yes, Majin Buu's original childlike yet underlying threatening nature was good, but no villain in any Dragon Ball property had the raw intimidation factor that Broly had. From the outright frightening display of his power through his first transformation, through his unstoppable tank-like nature, shrugging off even the strongest of everyone's attacks like he was getting pricked by a twig, my heart never stops racing when I see that hulking massive meaty rage take those five guys at Forget I said that. Not the part about Broly being my favorite villain, that, um, that, uh, that, that last bit. Forget that bit. Next. Goku is a terrible character. While I can think of several amazing characters right off the top of my head, Vegeta, Trunks, Frieza, Piccolo, Bardock and the Japanese dub, fuck, even Nappa has more character. I can easily name Goku as one of the worst, if not the worst, if Goten didn't exist. There are technically two Goku characters, actually. One in the English dub and one in the Japanese dub, and they both suck. In English, Goku is just a mere Superman clone, but done a hell of a lot worse. In Japanese, while a better version in character, not so much in voice actor, he's a selfish prick who would sooner skewer his own sons on both ends of a metal bar and bench press them than care about anything but his progress as a fight. Holy fuck, that was a morbid image. Dragon Ball Kai's music is fantastic. I have a rule when it comes to TV and video game soundtracks. That rule is, if the music is good enough to warrant listening to on its own without any context whatsoever, then the soundtrack as a whole is good. Bruce Faulkner's tracks may be iconic to the DBZ franchise, but only a fraction of them is worth listening to on their own. I mean, really listen to this excerpt from Faulkner's Vegeta vs Goku track from the Majin Buu saga. Does that really sound like something good enough to stand on its own? It only works well when paired with the footage of Goku and Vegeta's battle. Meanwhile, here's a bit from Dragon Ball Kai's The Braveheart The Strong. Not only does it fit with whatever scenario it's played with, but I could listen to this one in its fullest without ever needing to skip through it just to hear the parts that played when Goku punched that one guy. Faulkner may have some unforgettable clips, but it's ultimately just a collection of bits that you edit together to make something sound more badass. Do I dislike Faulkner's work? No, of course not. He's got a few gems like Gohan fights Frieza and Destruction, but do I think it's good music? Standalone? Absolutely not. Dragon Ball Z Resurrection of F is the worst Dragon Ball movie ever made. Ignoring Dragon Ball Evolution, since it's clear that wasn't even meant to be a Dragon Ball film to fucking begin with, Resurrection of F does absolutely nothing. It's not competent on a storytelling level, since the only thing that ever really happens is that Frieza comes back just to die again. And don't even get me started on not only shafting Vegeta's character AGAIN, but that bullshit lazy conclusion of reversing fucking time. It's not a technical landmark since Battle of Gods, an amazingly superior movie to this pile of junk, already beat it to the punch, but it also birthed the laziest transformation in all of Dragon Ball. Speaking of which... Super Saiyan Blue sucks. It's just Super Saiyan God. That's all. Nothing badass like the original Super Saiyan transformation, nothing groundbreaking like Gohan's ascension to Super Saiyan 2 or Goku revealing Super Saiyan 3, nothing downright amazing in design and concept like Super Saiyan 4, and nothing genuinely interesting about the original Super Saiyan God. There was no creativity behind Super Saiyan Blue's creation. It was made for marketing material. Nothing more. Either that, or Toriyama has so little respect for his own fucking franchise and fell into the hole of people who think DBZ is nothing more than power-ups for no reason, punching, and screaming. Oh wait. Super Saiyan Rose sucks. What's next, Toriyama? Super Saiyan Green? Super Saiyan Purple? Super Saiyan White? Actually, Super Saiyan White sounds like it could be kinda cool. Oy. 
I think this was long overdue. My original video was rambling, unfocused, it honestly sounded like I was reading from a 5th grader's failed English essay. So naturally, some people mentioned that I wasn't clear on multiple points, I needed to elaborate because I was too broad, and some others who think the world would be a better place if people who had an unpopular opinion kept their opinion to themselves. Anyway, I hope this cleared up a few things and made at least some amalgamation of sense this time around, and if you were triggered by this, mission accomplished.